I can finally officially say that I have joined the Air Force. Oh my gosh, it is so exciting to be able to say that. But with that being said, let's talk about MEPS day two. So I'm finally filming this on February 2nd, 2021, and I went to MEPS on January 14th and 15th. Day one of MEPS is where anybody who needs to take the ASVAB will do that. And day two is the extremely long medical day. And that for me was on Friday, January 15th. So I woke up at 3.50 a.m. and I had my first alarm set for like 3.20 so I can half wake up and then still stay in bed but then still get up early. <laughs> so it's 3.50 and I'm gonna go ahead and get up and get dressed because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't that person that was gonna be late. So I went ahead and got everything packed last night so I didn't have to stress out about it this morning and then I laid my clothes out so I have my shoes and socks and underwear and non-sports bra ladies don't bring a sports bra bring a regular um solid color bra a pair of briefs jeans my tank top i'm gonna wear a button up over this my glasses and then just some extra things my mask and jacket and papers this is what i'm wearing today i just have a black button up and it has a collar on the top a pair of non-ripped jeans a pocket big enough to put my social and driver's license in because you got to carry those on you at all times because they ask for them a lot and then just a pair of tennis shoes it's going to be a long day so i am trying to be comfy so meps day two let's go i left my room at 4 25 to go down to the lobby and i just saw downstairs a room full of people and i was like oh my gosh i'm late i thought they said 4 30 did they say four o'clock and I was freaking out a little bit. Me and this other guy got on the elevator and I was like, are we late? He's like, yeah, I think we're late. Thankfully we weren't late, but when you're at MEPS, every little thing that you think you can get in trouble for seems a little bit terrifying. You go out to get your boxed breakfast and you guys, this was probably one of the most disgusting breakfasts I had ever had. So it's a little styrofoam and they have roast watery eggs and I could only eat one sausage link because it was just gross. The biscuit was not good. So it was not a good breakfast, but make sure that you drink plenty of water because you are going to have to pee in a cup whenever you are doing your medical evaluations. So I started drinking lots of water early in the morning, but then foreshadowing for later, when it got to the time for me to have to pee in a cup, like I had to pee so bad. So try to make sure you're drinking water um, in the morning, but just don't overdo it. But then of course you don't wanna have to drink so much that where you have to go to the bathroom before you get a pee in a cup because then you don't wanna be the person that has to keep walking around and sipping on water until you can pee because we did have a few of those people. Ladies, this one is for you. Don't forget a hair tie, which normally I have one right here on my wrist. And when I was at MEPS, I had very long hair. I just cut my hair a little over a week ago. I cut 12 inches off my hair. My hair was down and I meant to bring a hair tie. So my hair was just down all day. It ended up not being an issue, but it's just a lot easier to get it out of the way so don't forget a hair tie and everybody bring a jacket because it was absolutely freezing in the lobby it was freezing outside because you're at a hotel and then we were waiting on the shuttle to take us over to the meps location and of course it is much better to have a jacket and be warm and take it off than be absolutely freezing and not have a jacket to put on. Those of you who wear glasses and contacts, this may depend on when you're going to MEPS, but personally, I usually wear contacts, but going to MEPS and knowing that we have to do the vision and they want to test your vision with your glasses on and then with them off. So I thought it would be easier just to wear glasses, easier to take on and off, but right now, during COVID and having to wear a mask the whole time, it was so annoying to wear glasses. So honestly, if you have to go at a time where you're wearing a mask, 
I would recommend just wearing contacts and taking your contact case that has solution in it and just sticking it in your pocket. Wear jeans. I know I'm kind of throwing a lot um, out here right all together, but if I think about it, I'm just gonna say it so I don't forget. Wear jeans so you have pockets because you're gonna need to keep your driver's license and social security card on you and that way you have a pocket to put anything else that you need like your contact case so we ate breakfast and then just sat around in the lobby we started lining up at 5 30 ladies first then they came down the line of everybody and gave us all pumps of hand sanitizer and then at 5 45 we were on the shuttle and heading over to the MEPS location i am going to have some stories for you guys um more like tips and in-depth stories about a few things that happened at MEPS. <laughs> but I'm not gonna put them all in this video cause I'm just gonna kind of go through how the day was. But some of these stories deserve to be told. So we get to the MEPS location and there were about 30 to 40 of us. Um, we just standing outside and a man came out and gave us a little speech about some things, making sure we didn't have any weapons or anything on us. Guys, do not bring weapons to MEPS. Do not bring weapons to MEPS. Do not bring weapons to MEPS. Because as soon as you go inside, you have to go through security and they scan your bags and everything. You're gonna have everything with you that you have at the hotel because you don't go back to the hotel after that. And then there is a room that has little cubbies in it that we can put all of our things in. Once you put stuff in there, you can't go back to that room throughout the day. You can't go back and forth to get things. You're just gonna keep your driver's license and social security card on you, your contacts if you need that, but you leave your phone and literally your backpack, everything else stays in that room. Once you're through security, you go in and check in at the main desk, and then they're probably gonna tell you to go and check in with your branch because there is people from every single branch there and during this whole time at MEPS, you're gonna do a lot of going to the main desk, going to your branch office, going to the main desk, going to your branch office, and they'll just keep sending you back and forth a whole bunch of times. So you'll go check in with your branch, you'll put a sticker on that has your name and maybe like an ID number or something on it and you'll wear that all day. It has to be visible, which was another thing for me, my hair kept falling in front of it. So they would kind of like look at me and I have to be like, oh, sorry bring a hair tie girls. So once you're checked in with your branch, you will go over to the medical wing and you'll check in at that desk. And then they are going to hand you a folder with some papers with your information in it. And then there will be a paper, paper clip to the top of your folder that looks something like this. It's a checklist of all the things you need to have done. You are not gonna fill this out. This is for all of the medical staff to fill out as you go through each step. So BP for blood pressure, vision, hearing, blood, this is to get your blood drawn, urine, and interview. These are all the steps that you have to take at MEPS to be able to pass. Now everyone may not get these things done in the exact same order because you'll file in and someone will say, okay, you two come to vision. And they'll be like, okay, you four go to hearing. And then you might switch or they might send you to get your blood pressure done. It's kind of all over the place. And that's why there is a checklist to go over it all and make sure that you've hit all the boxes that you needed to. So typically the first thing might be getting your blood pressure taken. So you'll go over, they'll put the thing around your arm and they'll take your blood pressure super quick. With the vision, you will do the colorblind test which is a little flip book and it will be like this and she'll just literally flip through like this she was going through it so fast because you're either colorblind or color deficient or you're not and it's going to be really easy for them to tell that so i went and she was like flip 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 and i'm like 25 4 18 2 7 and you know then they're like okay you're not colorblind other people if they hesitate they're gonna know yeah, you're probably colorblind or color deficient. That doesn't mean you're going to fail MEPS. It is just going to disqualify you for certain jobs. My husband, Kyle, for example, is color deficient. So it disqualified him from certain jobs that he was able to join. Next is going to be depth perception. And there is a machine that you, you look into like this. And it's just a bunch of circles that you're looking at and you have to try to decipher which ones stand out from the others. And honestly, 
it is really hard and surprisingly I passed depth perception like there were some that I could tell and there was some I was kind of hesitant on but I actually passed it's not a disqualifying factor again it just limits you to certain jobs or it disqualifies you from being able to go into certain jobs basically so I tried a little trick and as you are looking down at the machine because when you're staring at the same thing for a while you know things kind of like blend together so try to like take your time breathe because you're not in a rush it does in the moment it feels like you're in a rush while you're at meds because it's like i gotta do this i gotta do this i gotta do this but just when you're in each test just like take a breath it's okay and something i tried to do i don't know if it really helped me or not is i would like i would blink to try to like refresh and I would like wiggle my head back and forth like this because if maybe one standing out a little more than the other and if I did that I would be able to like see that possibly maybe it worked it worked for me I guess because I passed the next part is where you will read the lines that have all of the letters and you will do this with and without your glasses or contacts and it's just this one, just for a few seconds where you have to take your glasses or contacts out. So again, I wish I would have worn my contacts because I would just had to take them out, do that, put them in. I would be fine at the beginning and the whole rest of the day without my glasses fogging up. Personal preference though, my recommendation. Then the next part is where you sit down and you look into the machine and you see a picture like all the way at the other end. And it might be of like a farm or a hot air balloon or something like that. I honestly think that part is just for people who do need a prescription because the picture will go in and out of focus and that's how they tell how good your eyes are. So everyone may not do that part, but regardless, it's super easy. You just look at the picture, goes in and out of focus, and then um, they'll have you read letters again, just like you did when you were looking into the machine earlier and see what the smallest line that you can read is. And those of you who have gone to an eye doctor before know that the worst part is when you sit down and they shoot the puff of air into your eye, you're supposed to like look straight and it goes, Tch. they don't do that at MEPS. So no worries, super easy. That's the vision. Then you get your checkbox once you're done with all of that. Next is the hearing test. You and a few other people will go into a soundproof room. Like you'll go into a room and then there's a soundproof box in there. And you'll each sit at little stools and you'll put the headphones on. And then there are going to be a series of beeps that you hear. For example, it might be like... And you'll have a little clicker in your hand. So you hold it in your hand and you'll press the button whenever you hear it. And <laughs> yeah. there's another story for this. Basically, when you hear the sound, press it only one time per sound that you hear. So if you hear don't go boop, boop, boop. You hear one. Once you're done, you just sit there. Don't make any noises. And it also doesn't tell you when you're done, which I hated because I'm like, is it just a really long pause? Am I done? But I still just sat there with it and I didn't hear anything. So I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm done. But it was me and two other people and you have to wait for the lady to open the door because she can see everybody's testing like on the outside. So once everyone's done, she'll open the door and let you out. The next thing was the MEPS briefing. And this could be the very first thing you do. It could be mixed in all over the place. It probably just depends on when the commander has availability to come in and do the briefing. This is when they go through and just talk about expectations of MEPS, not lying at MEPS. This is also when they do the breathalyzer there will also be a piece of paper sitting on every single person's desk at least there was for me it was just telling you that you were having medical evaluations done that day and females would get their breasts and genitalia checked out and that men were going to get their genitalia checked out and i heard another guy like freaking out about it later because they were going to look at his butt another foreshadow it is like the quickest thing ever not a big deal don't stress out about it so easy don't worry, it's gonna be okay. All right, after blood pressure, vision, and hearing, you will go and sit and wait until it's your turn to get your blood drawn. You'll go in and you know how it goes. They'll tie the little thing here and they'll put a needle in your vein right here. It goes by super quick. In the moment it was fine, 
but I bruised like crazy. I hope that didn't scare you though, because it really does go by really quick. It's not a big deal and they'll do that. Just look away. And I'm not even afraid of blood, but I don't really want to watch it. And the doctor talks to you the whole time. Well, at least mine did. All the people at MEPS were actually really, really cool. Mostly friendly, but just listen and pay attention. Don't be the person who is going to make everything difficult because it makes it harder on yourself. And it's just gonna make the people at MEPS like even more mad. They're trying to get through their day just like we're trying to get through our day. Just listen and follow the rules. If you can't listen and follow the rules, I do not think that joining the military is the right path for you in life. Next for me was the urine and we had to wait for the lady who was doing all the vision testing to be done with all of the people in that group. She came over and there was only like six of us girls. I really had a small group at MEPS. The amount of people at MEPS can vary day to day because it might be a day where people are getting ready to ship out, but then there are also people in processing into MEPS and it might be like a really busy, hectic day. But for me, it was just a in-processing day for us who were joining. Um, this is all different branches, by the way, not just Air Force. Once the lady was ready, all six of us girls and the lady went to the bathroom together. And I was thinking like we would be in line outside of the bathroom and then she would have us like come in one at a time. You'll go into the bathroom and there are two stalls, but neither of them have doors on them. So I was thinking maybe one, maybe two people at a time, but no, we all just went in there. <laughs> and she's like, all right, who wants to go first? And me and the other Air Force girl, actually, we both were like raised our hands and we were like, we gotta pee real bad. <laughs> Cause I drink tons of water at breakfast. So it made it easy. Like if you're in there and you're nervous, but then like maybe you already have to pee, it just makes it easier. Cause it's like, well, I gotta go anyway, whatever. If you don't have to pee real bad and then like you're nervous, then it's, it may take you forever to go. But me and her went, no problem. You have to fill up your cup like a little over halfway. It has to hit. So you cap it and then you're actually not allowed to wash your hands after you get in line because there is a window in the bathroom from that window you can't see the stall the way it is is there is a doctor's office in the middle and then there's a window over here and then the female bathroom and then there's a window on the other side in the male bathroom so then we are like the females are lined up here and the males are lined up here and there's that doctor's office in the middle so then they would come to each window and like test our urine. So yeah, you could see the other people. You could see people with their pee cups and everyone's different colors of pee. It was pretty gross. So when you get up to the window, the lady will pour like a certain amount in this other container and then seal that up and put like a sealed sticker on it. And you have to like look at it and make sure it's completely sealed because they send that off to somewhere else. And that's like the drug test thing and we have to sign off on it signature and initial saying that it was completely sealed and then ladies we also have to do a pregnancy test and then what's the other thing they test for sugar and protein in your urine last part for me was the interview with the doctor and the doctor i had was so sweet she was the doctor for everybody uh at that location that day but she was so sweet and just went through asked just a bunch of questions. This is especially the time where you want to make sure that you know everything that is on your paper that you came with from the recruiter. Because when you go to MEPS, your recruiter will give you a paper and it has like anything on there, like maybe a waiver that you had. Or for me, for example, I wear glasses or contacts, so that's on there. Have you ever had any surgeries? Yes, I've had my wisdom teeth removed. Oh, are you taking any medications? And I have a pregnancy implant, not a pregnancy implant, a birth control implant. <laughs> I'm not trying to get pregnant right now. I have a birth control implant in my arm. So that's notated on there. So just look over everything that you talked about with your recruiter and know what is on your paper. So those were the things for me. And say, for example, if she would have said, are you taking any medication? And I would have said, nope. But then it's like, oh, but it says here, you have this birth control implant. You wanna make sure your answers match and that you're being truthful on that. Like anything that's on that paper with a recruiter, 
be honest about all of that because it's already okay because you're at MEPS. Otherwise, your recruiter wouldn't have sent you to MEPS yet. It's not really a test, but they just wanna make sure that you really are qualified. The most important thing is if there is something that you mentioned that is not on your paperwork, that's when you could possibly like get in trouble or just not be allowed to swear in that day. For example, if I had had surgery because I had a broken arm, but I never told my recruiter, but then I'm at MEPS in the doctor interview and she's like, have you ever had any surgeries? But all my paperwork so far says no, because I never told my recruiter. And then I said, yeah, I had a broken arm and I had surgery to get it fixed. Then it's like a big red flag, like, uh, you're not telling the truth here. So know what's on your paper from your recruiter and stick to that. Once all of those boxes are checked on your checklist that you did all the things that you were supposed to do, then you just wait for the underwear Olympics, which really are not bad at all. It wasn't embarrassing, at least for me, it wasn't embarrassing. There were only six of us girls and it's just like, this is something that we all have to do regardless. So it's not a big deal. Don't make a big deal about it. So all of us girls went into a big open room. It was real cold. It's just like tile floors cinder block walls it was so cold in there stripped down all the way to just your bra and your underwear i'm gonna make another video going uh, more in depth about everything that you do during the underwear olympics but it was so easy so simple another thing that we did while we were waiting is we had to fill out a scar tattoo form where you have to notate any scars or tattoos on your body and you have to like measure them. They have a measuring stick in there if, if you need to do that. So for me, uh, I don't have any tattoos, but I have a little birthmark. Oh, because they, they said birth, like scar birthmark tattoo. So I put this birthmark on there and they said if you have piercings anywhere to, to put that other than earrings, they didn't mind. But I have my nose pierced and I also have my belly button pierced. So I put a scar right there. Yeah, so you fill out that form and then you just wait to do the underwear Olympics. Once the underwear Olympics are done, then you get fully naked and you put on this terrible, thin, almost like tissue paper robe. You get fully naked with everyone else in there? Yes, but there were like curtains in between so you could like pull them out and like get undressed so so we couldn't see each other. Interesting. Yeah, because there was like one bench along the wall and then there were like little curtains that you could pull out and we were kind of like in those. If there were more people, they probably would have had us go in the room and then get fully undressed, but where there were so little of us that we had enough curtains to block us, then... We got fully naked right yes. there. Terrible tissue paper robe, literally the worst. And then you're just sitting there cold, waiting for the doctor to call you in. The examination is literally so easy. If you have ever been to, like ladies, if you've ever been to the gynecologist, it's not even as bad as that. Cause I was thinking we were gonna put our feet up in stirrups and we didn't even do that. You go in and you lay down and they used to like feel your breasts, but they don't even do that anymore. She said they just stopped doing that like a few weeks ago. So all they do is a visual exam. So they'll open one side and look, open the other side and look, and then you butterfly your legs. And literally she just looks like this. And then literally to your butt just goes, okay, like two seconds, not bad at all. Don't stress, it's all good. <laughs> She also did some basic stuff where she would be like, look at my finger, follow my finger. And then for the Air Force, something they have to do now, they look in all of our ears, but for the Air Force, we have to do that like thing like that where you pop your eardrums because she has to be able to see your eardrums move. And that's just a requirement for the Air Force people now. After you pass that, then you're done. And as long as you passed everything, then you pass. So once you're done with all of the medical stuff, you will go back to the desk in the medical center and turn in your folder. And then you just wait for them to call you back up to check you out of the medical wing basically so you'll go back out to the lobby check in with them then you'll go check in with the branch people again and you'll kind of do that whole back and forth thing again then you'll go and have another interview with a whole other person i honestly don't even know who this guy was he just is the guy who 
kind of interviews everybody. He'll take all your fingerprints and then after that they have you do a survey and then you just have a whole lot of waiting until it's your turn to swear in. For the Air Force we also have to lift a weight like there's a machine that's just like a tall machine like this and you have to at least do 40 but the more that you can do then you qualify for more jobs. So I actually was able to do 70 pounds. You have to pick it up from the ground and then like twist your wrist and like keep pushing it all the way up. And there's a certain line you have to get it across. If you are worried about that, I mean, as long as you can do 40, then you're gonna pass that and it just helps you qualify for different jobs. So thankfully I was able to do 70 on that. So I was pretty much good for everything. And then they do provide a bagged lunch for you. It was like sandwiches and chips and like fruit and water, things like that. So I was done with everything about 1130 and then I had to wait to swear in at 1230. So we go to a room and had to watch a video, which honestly at the moment, I can't remember what the video really was. <laughs> But it was me and two other guys who were swearing in at the 1230 Air Force swear-in. They do different swear-in times throughout the day. And after we watch that, we go to the swear-in room and somebody will show you how to stand at parade rest and how to stand at attention. And then the commander will come in and swear you in. So there was a guy who was going guard first. So he swore in by himself because he had to say different things and the words were actually right there on a big plaque so he could read off of that and then he would have to stay like in the state of Alabama but then me and the other guy were going active so we would just repeat what the commander said because it just covered everything because we weren't doing a specific state so I actually have a video of me swearing in raise your right hand doesn't mean I state your name I'm Solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear. That I will bear. True faith and allegiance. True faith and allegiance to the same. To the same. And that I will obey. And that I will obey. The orders of the President of the United States. The orders of the President of the United States. And the orders of the officers appointed over me. And the orders of the officers appointed, appointed over me. me. According to regulations. According to regulations. And the uniform code. And the uniform code. code and military justice. And military justice. So help me God. So, so help me God. God. I'll go your right hand. I'm just glad that I have something because they do not record you there. And before I went, people were like, oh yeah, just ask for someone to record you and they'll record you. And I asked so many people and I kept getting, oh yeah, we'll get someone to record you. Oh yeah, we'll get someone to record you. Oh yeah, we'll get someone to record you. And then like I go in there and the lady who taught us to stand at attention and parade rest, like once we were standing at parade rest and she's like, do not move from that position until the commander comes in. And then I was kind of like, hey, I have my phone. And she's like, why do you have your phone in here for? And I'm like, because people keep saying that someone's going to record. She's like, who's going to record? I'm like, I don't know. Everyone just keeps saying someone will. Finally, she went out and got one of the Air Force guys and he came in and recorded for me. I was hoping he was going to record like all three of us swearing in because I was going to give the video to those guys. But he literally like only recorded me, which sucks for them. But I'm glad that I at least have something. So guys, just keep asking if you want it to be recorded. Find someone to do it. Mostly, I would say someone that's in your branch office. Make sure if they say, oh yeah, we'll get someone, be like, can you do it? That way you can be guaranteed to have somebody that will do it. After that, you'll go back to your branch office again. And during these times of like going back and forth, you are signing your contract. So I'm signing a four year contract and you sign with just your fingerprint. Like that's how you sign everything there. I was done with everything at about one, but we didn't leave until about 3.30. So we just sat in the lobby forever. It seemed like doing absolutely nothing. So all my stuff was in that closet from where we checked in from security in the morning. But before I swore in, I went to one of my Air Force guys. I said, hey, can I go get my phone? because you can't get your phone until you're done with everything and the last thing that you have to do is swear in. Some branches may allow people to get their phone, but the Air Force guy had to walk me over there to get my phone and I didn't get anything else out. 
So thankfully the rest of the time I had my phone while I was waiting, but other people, by the time they thought to go get their phone, the people from their branch office had already left for the day and they wouldn't let people go get it until it was time to leave that day. So people just had to sit there and literally do nothing. I talked to just a few people and actually ended up being people that were on the same shuttle, I guess because we were all had the same waiting time. So finally about 3.30, the shuttle got there and I had a two hour ride back home and I passed out as soon as I got on the shuttle. I was so tired. You have to keep your mask on on the shuttle as well. And yeah, I had my backpack and I just was like, I was out. But anyway, I was supposed to meet with my recruiter when I got back and do job selection. Depending on branches, the way you do job selection is different because I'm pretty sure Navy people swear in and select the job like at MEPS. But for me, I swore in, but I don't have a job selected yet. So I met with my recruiter two days later. I'll talk more about all the job selection stuff later. But currently I'm actually still waiting on a job and a ship date, but I, Finally swore in. This is the furthest I've ever been. I'm excited. Really don't stress out about MEPS too much. You'll do it. It'll be great. Thanks for watching. Talk to you guys later.